Hi friend, today we're gonna to make the printed circuit board for the real tube pedal. It may seem strange that instead of repairing this one, we're going to make a new one. But if I just repaired this, it wouldn't help you to make one. Another thing is that I don't know who was in this and I don't know what mistakes were made. So making it from scratch may be the easier path. Uh, it may also be better for the longevity of the pedal. So we're going to do it today. We're going to take this and try to lay it out very similarly. I think that's going to be the best plan. Once we do get the printed circuit board back from manufacturer, I do believe this one will be a lot easier to fix once we see what the issues are. All right, so let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is measure the dimensions of the circuit board so that the one we make fits inside here perfectly. I get 74.2 millimeters and 48.7. And what else we're going to do is measure from one side to the center point of each one of these potentiometers. 11.4, and 62.2. So we'll mark all those down. I'm gonna measure them again to make sure and uh, be more accurate with it. Um, we're gonna mark all that down. Oh, I didn't zero this out either. There, that's better. Uh, I'm gonna measure everything again and see what we come up with. Here's my approximate numbers. I made them just as close as possible with rounding. I didn't want to go to 0 0.032 or things like that. So uh, let me measure that width again. It's 74.4 and 48.8. All right, these are the numbers I got. These are where the potentiometers are. These are where the LEDs are. And this is the dimension of the board itself. Uh, the reason we're doing, uh, the reason we're measuring where the potentiometer centers are is because they have to fit. Um, we're at least gonna line up these three and these LEDs, but these are probably going to be uh, not connected to the board. We're going to run wires from the board to them just because I'm not sure we could get the exact potentiometers that is going to fit this. These have detents in them as well. If I could find that, that would be nice to uh, keep added in because uh, I have one smooth one and the rest... Can you hear him? All right, let's get this board laid out. Okay, first step is to create our board from our schematic. Yes. And since we have our dimensions, here's what we could do. We're going to select this line at the top. We're gonna to hit the info button. Ah, let's change the grid to millimeters first. Then we, since we measured in millimeters, we could just put in our 74.2, 48.4, .4, and 48.4. Hit OK. And you'll see it doesn't make a rectangle because we need to also select this line to make it the correct length. Same thing. 74.2. There you go. Now that is the dimension of our board that we're going to use. And I had tried to lay this out using the 16 millimeter potentiometers because that's basically what's in here. They are the same size as every other 16 millimeter. Um, these ones even solder into the right place, but 
If you look right in there, you'll see that the pins for the potentiometers are just too close for my liking. So instead of the 16 millimeters, I made an executive decision and we're going to go with these nine millimeter potentiometers. We also may be able to save a few millimeters on the height of this board because these will go up higher than the 16 millimeter ones. Uh, let me see if I can find an example for you. There is less difference in the height from where these connect in this area right here. So we can move them up to the tip of the board. And what we'll do is we're going to use our dimensions and this is the low one. So it goes at, well, we're just, I'm just going to place it in the same way like this. Uh, see the 16 millimeter ones were at 43, I'm sorry, 43. Can't change them. Oh, it's because I have an air wire selected. There we go. Now the position should be, let's say this is the one that goes all the way on the left side of the board. That'd be 11.2 and 43.2. And when you hit OK, nothing happens. There we go. See how it moves it. <clears throat> so that's so the center is directly where it needs to be. But we're going to move that up. Ooh, let's load our design rules in first. That gives us a little bit extra room. There. Okay, one more thing to show you. You'll see that this 12AX7, the orientation can be, when you use the right click, it chooses between 90 degree changes. But if you look at the circuit board on the tube socket, pins two and seven are on a vertical line up and down. So, we're going to try to match that uh, because I imagine that they moved it to that orientation to make shorter um, traces. So we're going to match it in the same way. We're going to choose our info and select it. And I was messing with it and it looks like 289 is the best to get pins two and seven lined up. So we're going to go with that. And you'll see that I have the potentiometers laid out with the LEDs. And I just put them at the 43.2 that the 16 millimeters were at on the original board. But I'm going to change that to move them up. I'm going to measure how far down these ones are and how far down the nine millimeters would go and change it by that difference. So I'm going to get this laid out and see you in a few minutes. Okay, this is what I come up with so far. Uh, you'll see I have a few of the components underneath the tube socket. We could either put it under the tube socket, like on the original one, uh, but we could also put it on the back of the PCB because there's plenty of room on both sides. Uh, also, we saved a little bit of space because of the nine millimeter potentiometers. Um, I did try to compact everything, get rid of this space here and here, and it made the board smaller, but then all the traces were getting too tight. You'll see that I tried to make, when, when the top and the bottom traces cross, I tried to make them 90 degree angles. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much of a difference that's going to make, but I thought it was worth doing a little bit extra in that way. Yeah, 
you'll see that I made the power traces about twice as thick as the audio traces. In a circuit like this, you can make them all the same size. It doesn't really matter that much. You're not pushing so much power through here that these are going to heat up enough to uh, burn out. Uh, it's not really something to worry about, but it, it's good practice. And I think that's it. We're going to save this and head over to OSH Park. And we're going to submit this and see what it costs. $27.85. That's the most expensive one we've done so far, isn't it? Let me see. I'm going to put some text on here. We'll put it on the key names place here and the bottom names place here. And we'll call it a real clone. Put that on the bottom and the top. All right, we'll save that and then we will resubmit it. Uh, let's go back to the home page. It'll be the same price, of course. Hey, okay, now it puts the little text right there for us. All right, I'm going to order this up and I will release the board file, but not until I verify it. So have a great day. Talk to you soon.